Well, it was pretty clear from today's PMQs that Labour wants a clear dividing line between itself and the government over how to pay for this very expensive new freeze on energy prices. Well, we're joined now by the Shadow Business Secretary, Jonathan uh, Reynolds. Thank you very much for being Evening. with us. So, what do you want to see tomorrow from this trust? Well, I do think, and we have had it trailed, there'll be something to match Labour's offer to freeze bills. I mean, I'm, we've been quite clear, people cannot pay a household energy bill of four or £5,000. Now, there are mixed messages and different stories coming out from government, but uh, what we would like to see is the existing package of resources the government's put there, matched with a windfall tax. We believe it's legitimate and fair to take some of that unprecedented profit for the benefit of the nation as a whole. We'd also have uh, benefit from lower um, inflation. Put that together and that's how we would fund a six-month freeze in energy prices and have support for business as well. That's what we want to see. Now, there are, we don't know what the package will be. Um, clearly, if it is as one version of the story is that households will, will bear all the cost of that, but over a longer period of time, I think that is unfair and that's a drag on the economy the government will have to consider. And if it's borrowing, well, look, what we've heard so far from Kwasi Kwarteng and Liz Truss is that they believe they can cut taxes, increase spending, and somehow that will pay for itself. I mean, that is, that is clearly untrue, and we know it's untrue from previous actions of former Conservative governments. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you obviously want to see part of it funded through taxation, and you were talking there about you know, Liz Truss's plan just not making sense, but I guess what they would argue uh, is uh, that the way uh, to growth uh, is through uh, lower taxes. So that's what she wants to see, isn't it? And I guess if you're talking about the, you know, the record, it, she would also argue, I suppose, that now is a time to try something different, to do something new, to not go through the same tax and spend. Can you see the argument well, for well, that? I, I know that's their argument, but this is where the battleground is going to be. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, um, you know, Liz Truss has been a member of every government over the last 12 years. She bears some responsibility for that. I think it is interesting that their own analysis is that that has been a failure. I mean, they're very clear on that. I know Kwasi Kwarteng's called that Treasury orthodoxy. I'm pretty, well, for most people, that's Conservative mm -hmm. orthodoxy. So we both have the same analysis. You know, things haven't been as they should be. Now, for us, the, the problem is, fundamentally, there's a lack of growth, lack of productivity in the British economy. Low business investment is a part of that. We know from what George Osborne tried that cutting the headline rate of corporation tax did not increase business investment. We, we already tried that. We know it to be true. Rishi Sunak, to be fair to him, made this case and was correct in doing so. What we would say is that lack of growth comes from lack of clear policy, lack of clear consistency, no industrial strategy, or it's been tried twice and dropped twice, and that, that's the wrong message to send to business. We don't spend enough on science in this country, our research and development. It is, it's a much smaller proportion of GDP than any other developed nation. These are the things to look at. And this belief that there's a magic wand of cutting corporation tax, and you can pay for that, uh, as the Chancellor suggested on Monday, by what they call supply-side reforms that will make the economy grow. I'm afraid that is Conservative code for cutting employment rights and environmental protections. It has failed and it's wrong. Well, we'll find out, won't we? I guess, you know, uh, whose argument is yeah. right uh, in the months ahead, uh, certainly. Um, Liz Truss also wants to uh, look at energy uh, supply and the future of energy too. Um, we're expecting her, of course, to be uh, looking at things like more exploration uh, in the North Sea. Uh, Reuters uh, reporting uh, this evening uh, that she is poised uh, to announce more drilling licences uh, in the North Sea. Dozens, apparently, uh, more uh, licences for uh, exploration in the North Sea. Is that a good thing, in your view? Well, we'll have to see the detail, because any transition plan for the UK has always had but, gas as part of that. At the same time, like, be... I understand like, you want to see the detail, but, but we know that this is a road of travel, travel, that this is what they want to go down. She said it before. Uh, she wants to see more exploration in the North Sea. Is that something that you would support? Well, she'll have to prove that is consistent with our climate change objectives, internationally agreed treaties that we have signed up to. She'll also have to how explain... Do you have, how do you do that, though? How do you well, prove... Well, because I mean, we have a committee on, on climate change that has a carbon budget... You, you're either clearly... in favour of exploration in the North Sea or not? I, well, I mean... well you know, it's a part of the transition. If she, I mean, what we don't know is, is this new drilling for already uh, found oil fields, gas fields, or is it new exploration that the timescales of that will determine that? Uh, there's We're also a suggestion of, well, I, I mean, I'm sceptical that that can be done on a timescale consistent with the net zero transition. And if it's... Uh, so if, it, if it goes against... So, so just to be clear, if, if it goes against the net zero targets, then you would be against oh, absolutely, exploration. Absolutely, because not only is that a breach of our commitments, 
by not sticking to our commitments, we raise the risk, the cost of capital for the kind of investments we need in onshore wind, offshore wind, solar, new nuclear, a hydrogen industry. You know, we, we lose the jobs of the future as well as breaching things that we've signed up for. And if it's a return uh, to fracking, uh, as we've heard part of it, look, the best case scenario for fracking, even if people wanted it, and it's clear they don't, was something like four billion uh, cubic meters in four or five years time. That is in no way going to compensate for the loss of Russian supply to Europe, and quite frankly, I don't think even our geology and environmental standards in this country that could be done in a way. So it's the some wrong people, answer. And I, and it's some the people would past. some people would say, look. Uh, we understand, of course, the, how important the commitment to net zero is. We understand the uh, need for investment in renewables. But in a time of energy supply crisis, don't we need to look at every option on the table, well, including can, in the North Sea, including fracking? You can build a wind farm quicker than you can get fossil fuels out of the North Sea but in a new field. shouldn't we be doing both of those things? Well, it, it depends. If, if, if she can prove that is consistent with uh, our net zero objectives, but if she can't, not only is that the wrong thing to do, it will risk the investments that we most need to see for the long-term future of the country. And I think, again, you know, there's an element of, of to be honest, fantasy about a lot of Liz Truss's plans, whether it's on the economy and tax and spend or on areas like this. Now, we need the detail, to be fair to them. But in terms of what I've seen in the Conservative leadership contest, I think we should be worried. There does seem uh, one of the, the few things that there is a consensus over is the need to try and, and act to at least freeze or reduce people's bills uh, in the short term. We also have a crisis in energy supply. Is there a risk that by acting to reduce bills or to keep bills uh, lower than they would be otherwise, we're not incentivising people to cut their usage at a time when it's energy supply that is the issue? I mean, are you worried about blackouts? Do we need to look about rationing? I, I, I'm not worried by that because, first of all, when people say freezing prices at the current levels, there's no incentive to reduce your own consumption. Well, let's be clear that we're freezing them at levels considerably higher. So, you know, the incentive is certainly there for people in my constituency and I think the nation as a whole. If the government makes the right decisions, there shouldn't be the risk of what you are saying. But, you know, let's be clear, there hasn't been... There was a huge drop-off in, in home insulation installations after 2010. David Cameron cut the green crap. That, that you know, reduced the ambition of their own policy. You could have taken 15%, uh, you know, roughly out of the demand in terms of natural gas had those decisions not been made. The ban on onshore wind has been counterproductive and closing the storage facility... And, you know, again, another Conservative decision, really poor decisions that have increased our exposure, but the government can still make better decisions now, and that's what they need to do alongside measures. Should we be looking at things like they're looking at in Germany, like stopping lighting public monuments or asking shops to shut their doors? Well, like I think there is a... There is some benefit in a public education campaign around, you know, different ways to reduce consumption. An amazing number of homes in this country don't even have thermostats and that could relatively easily be solved. But I, I would worry by talking about that, that we are, you know, only the government can make the kind of intervention that is required mm -hmm on a crisis of this scale. And there's always benefit in us all living our lives in a more efficient way and, and using you know, scarce resources as best as possible. That's not an answer to the crisis. This requires real action from government because that's the scale of the challenge. OK, interesting stuff. Thank you very much, Jonathan Reynolds. Uh